Yeah. What's going on, y'all? You know who it is. Mr. Warmack, a.k.a. Low Rent, a.k.a. The Ignorant American, a.k.a. The Truth As You Know It, a.k.a. Dirty Business, a.k.a. The Jet Jaguar of YouTube. Hey, what's going on? Let me do this Ranger's Light over here a little bit. Here we go. Yeah. Alright, man. What's up, folks? You know who it is. You know what I do. It's Mr. Warmack. I'm in the building. And, uh... I have to give you an update or something on my Facebook. You might have to you might have to do a little searching on my Facebook. I changed my name to uh, my personal. It's not my government name anymore. I mean, my, it's the name. It's one of my older egos that people call me. It's uh, Ensa Banor, and I might spell it out down here. I don't know. It's uh, it's Ensa Banor. The, the link to still get to my thing will still pop up. I mean, if you go to my Facebook link on um, the YouTube thing, it will still pop up. It's just that if you search for my name. The reason I've done that is, if you know, if you, if you garner any type of uh, success or any type of, you know, um, I don't want to say this, uh, acclaim, I can't go in a lot of groups because, like, my name is sort of tossed out there, so... I don't want to seem like I'm promoting myself. You know what I mean? And so I just changed. I just changed. That was just a name change, just to, so I can't not promote myself because unless you know who I am, you don't know who that is. Unless, like I said, outside of like my friends and the people who used to call me that. And if you know who N. Sabah Noor is, that's not the name they call me. It was who N. Sabah Noor grew up to be. That's what they used to call me. I was what. The other one was Kyle. See, if you don't know who Kyle is, you need to look that up. So that was that's just what I'm saying. Okay. Now that that's over and done with, I'm gonna talk about stay in that region because uh, if you know the story of Ensabah Noor, you know that happened in Egypt and who he grew up with. Here. So I'm gonna stay in that region, so to speak, the Middle East. Uh, I'm gonna talk about Assad. And ISIS, you know, who's the winner here? It's Assad. Because look at it this way. I mean, we don't like Assad, but Assad's running a, a quote unquote legitimate government. But we damn sure don't want ISIS to run things over in the Middle East. So we have to take the, the horrible, which we have to take the most horrible out of the two. They're both horrible. We have to decide who's more of a deviant who we don't want to control. Like I said, Assad, he's, he's, you know what he does. He, he muster gathers his own people. He poisons his own people. He's he's a ruthless dude. But uh, as far as what you've seen about ISIS on TV, yeah, it's true. They do do that to people. I'm gonna go here because uh, I got my uh, my field responder. Uh, their their show they told me they want me to look something up, but I can't right now because I didn't know I was talking to you guys. So know your role. But, uh, anyway, uh, Assad, he, he he's playing a waiting game. He's seeing how far ISIS is pushing. If you and if you know is ISIS, what get here's what gets me about ISIS. They can overtake an army of 20, 25,000, 2,500,000. And the first time they fought the Iraqi government army, the Iraqi government ran. But they couldn't overtake Kabani, which was a city of 45,000. And um, let's give credit to the, the, the women of the Syria, the, the, the fighters, the women fighters over there. Because they did, a, they did a large, they did their thing. But here's what, that's what kills them. I think I think ISIS is playing how far we can get in that region. Because you notice, ISIS was supposed to do this and do that in Syria. When they got the Ham city, when they got, uh, they didn't make it Damascus, they just made the Ham city. And uh, they, they, didn't really, they really didn't make a push like you thought they would. Because because like, cause that's, that's when, this is early on. Because in America, we're thinking ourselves, well, shoot, they're gonna knock each other out. But somehow, some way, 
ISIS has made a detour and went back to Iraq. But they're now they're going back to like northern, they're going to the, uh, the body which is on the border. And, uh, and, uh, and Turkey's getting involved. And the reason Turkey's doing it because this is just public pressure because I don't think Turkey gives a shit who loses or who wins as long as they stay where they're at. But uh, if you look at it, it's ISIS right now, Assad's winning. Because Assad gets to keep his post. The people love him because he's fighting ISIS. And uh, the Western world's not crawling down his back. But if ISIS were, to, if, if ISIS, I think the ISIS made a mistake, and, and this is how they roll, so that's, that's, how, that's how they roll. If ISIS went as far as saying we're fighting to get the Assad out of office because he was a legitimate or he was going to some people, I think ISIS would have had a point. But ISIS decapitates fucking everybody. Was, was men, women, children, bear them alive, they do all that. So I think that's where ISIS went wrong, and that's where I know it feels like ISIS. Everybody's like, well, just kill them all that God saw them out. But this is what I can keep telling you people. In that region, and let's include Israel, they've been fighting for thousands, they've been fighting since the dawn of time. Look at your religious books. Whether you're Hebrew, whether you're Muslim, whether you're an atheist, whatever. They've been fighting just a long time. There's nothing the Western world can do except incite more violence. No matter what we do, let me put it to this way. Now that we're over there, the enemy of my enemy is my friend works for them. It don't work for anybody but them. Because what they did is like, like whenever every time America was over there, they all galvanized to fight us. But when we left, they went back to fight each other. See what I mean? So. I think Assad is just playing games right now. He's just, Assad's just waiting to see who's going to win and who stays off his back. Because I'm sure if, if we ever put boots on the ground, and if we, especially if we ever went into Syria hard, I think he would have no problem doing what he has to do to get us out of Syria. You know what I'm saying? So right now, Assad is breathing a sigh of relief, but he's not breathing that good. Because... ISIS could went one way against him, but he knows that we want him out. And we were waiting for ISIS to do our dirty work. Now they were propped up by us, so why not? If you don't think they were, do your research on that one. So, I'm out of here. Do I have to make this video short because I'm running out of time on the, on the video recorder here? So I'm going to get back to you guys and, hey, message me. Like I said, go to Facebook, do all that. I'm out of here. I got things to do with people to see. Peace. Great guy. He's always on himself.